Cooper Harris was only 22 months old. I mean, it isn't hard to imagine that he wasn't making some noise in the back seat, no? Possibly. I think it depends on what kind of child you have. I actually myself have five children, and some of my children immediately fell asleep when we put them in the car and started driving, and others screamed the entire way. So I think we have to assume it is plausible that he could not have hurt his child if his child were sleeping the whole time. Okay, number two is, and I'll ask it to you again. They had just been to a fast food restaurant. How could, how could Ross Harris have forgotten about his son that quickly? Well, I, I, you know, we don't know that. I think we just have to know that we are an extremely distracted population. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he could have simply forgotten. He could have been thinking the million things he was going to do once he, you know, got into work. We don't know at this point whether he forgot or whether he intended to kill his son. We simply don't know. All right, Carol, I'll, I'll ask you this. Um, his daycare was on site at Ross's workplace. Would that, wouldn't that trigger something in him possibly? Does it help or hurt the prosecution? Does it make it easier psychologically to do something like this? Because it's still maybe even more normal that he was at work and, and thought his son was in good hands? Well, the, the, the issue is, though, that the Chick-fil-A and the work and the daycare were all so close to each other. And it isn't likely that the baby would be so quiet right after he put him into the car seat after going to Chick-fil-A. But, you know, the thing that's the most concerning, first of all, yes, it's very important to know when they look these things up on the Internet. But in any case, even if a parent looks that up, you know, there's a question. Are they unconsciously thinking about doing that, not just preventing something that may happen in the future? Are they really thinking about that? And, you know, the most, the, the really, the, the most, I think he's protecting his wife. I think it's the wife that's behind this. Uh, when oh. he got out of the car, oh, apparently he Go. was... Apparently, he was saying, uh, oh, my God, look what I did. And the wife's uh, remarks at the funeral, that is what is the most disturbing psychologically. Okay, when she I, talked I, about I, now. He I'm going to talk about that. I'm going to talk about that. You're getting, you're getting ahead uh, okay. of me here. But, I mean, <laughs> okay. listen, again, we still don't have no knowledge that the wife is being investigated for anything or has done anything. But, Mark, Mark, you, you seem kind of outraged that she's making that <laughs> assumption. Well, no, my only concern is that there's absolutely no evidence whatsoever to support the idea that he was protecting the wife or that he was trying to protect something that she did wrong. And this is the type of speculation that all of a sudden becomes the fodder for a story that now the wife is doing something. I really think okay. we need to calm down, relax, and just realize we know very little about this case. The cops know more, and we'll find out more Thursday with the probable cause hearing, and then afterwards, let it work its process. Okay, before, quickly, Carol, quickly, because you mentioned it here, I just want to put up that quote. At the funeral, right, Leanna Harris said, I am, uh, am, I, am I angry with Ross? Absolutely not. It has never crossed my mind. Ross was, uh, and I was, you know, will be, will, if we have more children, a wonderful father. Ross is a wonderful daddy and a leader of our children. What, what do you make of that speech? Do you find that suspicious? Well, I, yes. I mean, she's not angry with him because I think that they were in this together or that he was actually protecting oh her. God. She said, well, the things that, but the things that she said at the funeral that were more serious were where she talks about now he won't ever have to have a broken heart, Cooper. Um, he won't ever have to mourn the death of his loved ones. Um, you know, things wow. like that, saying that it was a good thing that he wasn't what there. Happened. Mel? It's a mom trying to find some solace uh, you know, in what look, happened to it's, her. It's amazing to me that a psychologist would sit here and lecture America on the stage. A psychiatrist would lecture America on the appropriate stages of grieving. You got a woman that not only lost Wait. her 22-month-old, but her husband is now in jail. And there is, by the way, another explanation for this. It's Carol, a huge mistake. Quickly. He realized halfway through the day, and it's in his cover-up of the mistake that it makes it look intentional. Well, and also very, very religious Carol. people. Carol? Well, I think there are so many comments that she made. We don't have the time to go through all of them, but she didn't really seem to be appropriately grieving, and that's really the most suspicious oh. part. Okay.